Hi everyone. My name is Sankit. Uh, I'm a master student with Alex, and I'll be the TA of uh, this digital image processing course. Today's agenda is uh, I'll I'll uh, I'll introduce all the uh, course material that we have, uh, uh, the website and uh, the lecture notes, uh, to, uh, and where we are uh, where we're going to post the uh, tutorials, homeworks, and uh, other things. And then uh, it, today's uh, tutorial is mostly about uh, convolution. Uh, so first, uh, administrative stuff. So uh, so this is the course website. Uh, we hosted it on GitHub. Uh, so uh, so here we're going to post. Uh, in, uh, if you're at the home page, we're we're going to post all the announcements here. Okay. Uh, do do uh, so basically in the info you see the course material and uh, I'll just tell them I, I won't take you through them. Uh, so in the info you'll see all the course uh, what we're going to do in every class. Uh, so we have like a tentative schedule, and uh, so we'll have uh, three assign three or four assignments this time, and a final project. Uh, for the project we'll release a list of papers in uh, some sometime in middle of November, and uh, you can pick one and at the in the last class of the course, you have to, uh, I mean, in, in Teams, you can, you have to present uh, what you're going to do for the project, like some preliminary work, and in a month, you have to turn in the report, um, and uh, that will that will carry 40% roughly, and uh, those homeworks and uh, home, home assignments will carry 60%. So there's no exam. Uh, and the, uh, the lecture notes uh, will be posted here, and this lecture notes also has uh, two preliminary uh, uh, notebooks which uh, uh, which Alex was mentioning about multivariate calculus and linear algebra uh, probably will add one on probability soon and the first lecture notes is already posted there uh, the one he taught today and in the tutorials I'll, I'll post my uh, my slides and prob uh, probably my pi notebooks uh, and I or I'll link it to the github repo and the homeworks will be posted in the assignments okay uh, so, so yeah, uh, we'll we'll give instructions how to turn in the homeworks and everything, um, and what others? Yeah, so we strongly suggest to use Python for the assignments, maybe uh, because uh, some some of the stuff that we teach in the class may be useful for your homeworks. Uh, so it's kind of easy to do it in Python. So or, or if you strongly prefer MATLAB, it's fine. <coughs> So today uh, we'll, we'll talk about convolution. So we uh, we saw in the class that the convolution is defined by if if h of x is a function, and uh, and f of x is uh, f of h and f both are functions. And uh, if you want to convolve uh, f with h, so the conv convolution is defined by uh, in in the continuous form, it's defined like this. Uh, so it, it we represent convolution using uh, this asterisk. Uh, so it basically what it means is uh, you're you're taking uh, for a given for every given point you're taking the whole support of the uh, of of the function you're operating with and you're multiplying uh, if you it's it's basically integral because it's continuous uh, you're multiplying with every other point uh, uh, for uh, of this uh, of the support function uh, uh, for, uh, from minus infinity to infinity and this is you you basically do element wise product with the support. And you sum them up in the end. Uh, that is the value of uh, that particular point. Uh, con uh, that part, uh, convolution at that particular point. So, so for example, if you if you take a, if you take a box function and you convolve with another box function, it looks like this. So I mean, this is a sorry. So this is. It, it looks continuous, but it's actually implemented discrete. But uh, if if it's a continuous function, then uh, you see that uh, the uh, the yellow region it covers uh, basically the error uh, the the area under the area under the region which is which is calculated by the integral, and and as as the box uh, goes through you see the once it once it enters the blue box it starts uh, it starts having a support uh, before the support was uh, support was not aligned with the actual function value so everything was cancelled to be zero once it starts entering it it starts. Uh, it starts spiking up, and once they perfectly align, the, this, this function support and the convolution support is perfectly aligned. So you get the maximum value there, and then you uh, 
and and then it, it dampens again so uh another example so it is zero in the beginning and once it's the once you start getting support you you uh it, it starts increasing and here the, it perfectly aligns uh, the area under the curve perfectly aligns with the box when, when you when you integrate with the box function so it's uh, uh so you see that uh here the here the it, it's exactly the the integral is exactly the function itself um so uh this is con continuous case but in any real life scenario we don't we're not uh, we won't have any uh, uh we won't have a chance to work with a continuous function because we need to sample them before using uh um b before before actually processing them so it's digital uh, Alex will show uh, how to uh, sa the the concept of sampling and uh, how do you uh, how do you efficiently sample them in the next lecture. But let's say uh, in in this uh, if you if you find uh, if, if we saw the definition of uh, convolution in the as a uh, as the integral uh, with uh, sum over support with the function. So now in the discrete case we see it, it's just uh, let's say our blue function is uh, the the blue blue matrix is the input and the gray uh, the gray is the gray one is the is the one with which we're convolving with so the first element in the green is basically uh, so every time uh, so you you choose the support uh, from the left side and the right side and you basically convolve with the with the gray box so uh this 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 first element is uh, uh is uh you get the first element like this i mean here we of course considering uh, that the input and output will have the same size but not necessary if that doesn't happen then you basically uh lose lose the last two elements and uh, it's still uh, it's still pretty trivial most of the signal remains the same except the ends so uh so in in the discrete case in the in the two D case you can uh, basically define the convolution as a if if, if uh, this is your input image, uh, then uh, you 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 are you have to multiply with a kernel. Uh, then basically you multiply uh, each uh, e uh, for every pixel you choose uh, you choose the support according to the convolution size and you multiply element wise with the input uh, with with the input values. So that's how you end up with the with the center pixel in the uh, in the output uh, in the output image so uh, and then you uh, and then you basically iterate through the through the matrix uh, through the input matrix and uh, and you end up with the output image so here again we have the same uh, problem with the with the borders which uh, for which we don't really have the support on the other side so what we the common practice is uh, you either uh, do a reflection or as in, as in you replicate the pixel before uh, to the to the pixel on the other side or you you just put zero there and then you uh, and calculate uh, and calculate the function the convolve uh, value in the in the borders so uh, so this is an example of uh, yeah sure yeah uh, yeah so so there's a there's a notion of uh, there are two two things one is correlation and convolution so correlation is basically uh, defined as a uh, if a b c g uh, d e f and g h i are written like that it's called correlation but convolution is defined as a uh, transpose i mean it's conjugate of uh, correlation so that's why you basically flip it but in practice it doesn't matter they just name differently uh basically both are element wise products just with a different matrix so yeah 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 or the other way i mean so uh so okay Okay, so uh, in the let's say uh, uh, our blue uh, again, uh, like in the previous uh, in the one D case, the blue blue function is basically our input. Uh, now you want to calculate the convolved values of uh, this green function, uh, which is the output. Uh, so you take this, uh, you you are given a convolution of size three by three. So you you iterate through the the blue box uh, by uh, by padding it with zeros, and then you get uh, each pixel from. Uh, 
uh, uh, for for the output with the support. Uh, this is when I mean this is a particular case when when you implement it on NumPy or MATLAB. So you'll have this option of uh, choosing uh, whether to uh, remain the retain the size of the input and output to be the same, and or you have a chance of uh, you you can just say that okay I want I don't want I don't care about size. You just uh, get uh, whatever uh, without without the padding. So if you want to be true to the signal. <laughs> Yeah, you will lose uh, the size of the output. Let's say, let's say here, in here, if you if you don't do padding, you basically lose. Uh, you'll get, I think, four by four or something. Yeah. <laughs> so if you pad too much, then the problem is you will uh, you will lose the accuracy in the borders. Basically, you will get black borders because it it loses heavily. Uh, you, I'll show you in the code. Yeah. So uh, let's see some code. Uh, so yeah, so uh, for the tutorials, I think uh, I, I will post uh, I will post all the Py notebooks on some GitHub repo, and I'll host them. And I'll also uh, give some instructions uh, how to uh, install what what are the required files. Uh, I'll probably include some YML file. Uh, which will uh, which, with which you can just install all the required repos and uh, set up the environment. Uh, so right now we are plan right now uh, our agenda is we'll implement uh, convolution 1D and 2D, uh, and then we'll uh, we'll see what is not good with our implementation, and uh, we'll see what's good with the implementations available in the packages, and we'll use them to show uh, different uh, different image processing operations. Okay. Uh, so yeah, this is basically uh, import. Um, so yeah, so in in a one D case, what is convolution? If you if you remember the slide here, so so we take for every pixel here, you take uh, you, depending on the size of the convolution, you take the support and you you do element wise multiplication and you get it here. Uh, you get the output right. So that's what is implemented here. You you go through the first array and you go through the second array and then for uh, you create a zeros a zeros of uh, the expected output and then at every point you basically uh, multiply the the ones from the kernel and ones from the function and you get the output. So uh, uh, it's uh, defined like this. So uh, we'll see. Let, let's take an example of. Uh, so let's say we have a conv convolution function, and let's take a signal uh, which is uh, which is all ones plus some noise, Gaussian noise, and then we'll try to see uh, what happens if we uh, if we convolve it with uh, with with a linear filter, which is uh, which is all ones. So uh, so. Uh, so this is a this is our signal np np ones of hundred. It basically generates a, a ones vector of uh, with hundred size and uh, zero point zero five is a noise uh, is a noise level, and we multiply it with uh, with random random noise. This is not Gaussian, but uh, if you can add n, this Gaussian. So uh, so uh, and then uh, we uh, our filter is basically a filter of ones. Uh, we, we normalize it because uh, we don't want the values to explode. Uh, so if you don't normalize it, you basically are accumulating all the ones and into into each pixel. Basically, if you if you are convolving with ones and your filter size is all ones, then you'll be getting tens in your in all the pixels. So one plus uh, and so on ten. So that's why we uh, we prefer the kernels to be normalized. So when that that's why when we choose a filter of uh, size one, then you basically normalize it, and so you get point ones all the time uh, in all elements. Uh, here, here it's a no. The, here it's a one D signal, and uh, it's initialized with one plus some noise, which is uh, one point one plus or minus uh, zero point zero five, I think. Uh, here. Here, here it's it's a signal and it's one. So, uh, it's, so here we we're just taking a one D signal. It's not really an image. Yeah, yeah. So you are adding some noise, which is a uh, which has a uh, which has a mean of uh, uh, if it's, if it's random rand n, then it's a mean of zero. And uh, standard deviation we're setting it to point zero five. So. Uh, 
So it looks like this. So it's the blue line here. If you see, it's uh, it's almost one, but it has some uh, uh, it, it it has some noise, right? So uh, so orange line is uh, so just a second. So this is our signal basically. Uh, so it's one plus or minus. 0 0.02 or whatever. So now, uh, what we want to what we want to see is how uh, since we implemented our con one D, uh, so we will take a, will take a convolution filter of uh, size ten. So it has a support of ten elements, and uh, and so you uh, and and you do a convolution and then see how the how it affects it. So you see that uh, since in in my implementation here, so uh, there was no zero padding. Uh, I'm sorry. There, there is zero padding. That's why you. That's why you lose the. Uh, that, that's why you lose the. Uh, in order to maintain the same uh, size of the vectors, you you, you lose the edges. But, uh, but relatively, it's uh, it's okay. Uh, sorry. What do you mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you, there, there was no information, but you created something. But it doesn't matter in case of images because uh, you, since you have two to six by two to six, you don't really see the edges, which are four or something, four pixels or whatever. So it's uh, it's still fine. But uh, but in if you'll see in the case of images how it happens. Uh, so in 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 the in in the case of two D, so. Uh, so it basically convolution is uh, when, uh, like this so you have uh, you you take every pixel uh, in the input so and then uh, you uh, for 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 the for one and one so you basically look at 0 0 0 1 0 2 and z uh, 1 0 2 uh, 2 0 2 1 2 2 and this one the all the neighborhood and you and uh, from here and you multiply with the uh, kernel, and then you uh, get the output of the center pixel. So, sorry. So kernel is anything like uh, you can, for example, you can give it all once. If you want, then it basically acts like a denoiser or something. So it just smooths uh, the whole uh, all the all the values in the input. Or if you give it some kind of a Laplacian, like if you it has a peak in the in the in the center and it has all the negative values like this. So it acts like some kind of a sharpener. I, I'll I'll show you uh, in the next examples. What you want to do? What kind of operation you or image processing operation you want to do? So, uh, sorry. So uh, I'll give you this code. It's documented, but uh, I'll I'll just walk walk you through it. So uh, when we were given an image and a kernel, so you you take every point in the image and every point of the uh, every point in the image. Uh, so you you have two fours in the image. So you take one pixel, and for that pixel. Uh, you look at the neighborhood in the kernel uh, in the in the input and um, and you multiply with the kernel so here uh, i implemented it for the case of 3 by 3 kernels which is which is bad i mean it's not really general but uh, we'll see uh, it, that it does the does the job at least for 3 by 3 uh, i'm sorry it's like it's uh, showing a lot of code is bad but I, i'll give you the code and i think if you carefully go through it it's uh, it's documented and you'll understand it. So for now, you have to believe me that uh, this does three by three convolution. So uh, so I'm uh, I'm importing some image and resizing it uh, and basically converting it to grayscale uh, um, and scaling it between zero and one. So and uh, and resizing it. So uh, let's uh, using using our function. We want to uh, so our image is originally this was original. So this is our original image. So it's a. Uh, 
it's a it's a famous image which is used uh, mostly uh, in uh, image processing community so uh, so so now we want to do a uh, uniform blurring basically which means you're taking uh, a kernel with all ones and you're uh, and you're multiplying uh, and you're doing convolution uh, with it so so i did a mistake here it should be normalized Ah, uh, yeah, so I created a sum here, yeah, so it's okay. Yeah, so the normalization was inside, sorry. So when I get the kernel, it's, uh, it basically normalizes it, and uh, at the end, it divides by the sum, so, so it's okay. Uh, yeah, so, so, yeah, let's see the output. You see that this was the original image, uh, and this is the blur this is a blurred version of the image. Uh, can you see any difference? Ah, uh, it's evident. Okay. Uh, so, so this is a so uni uniform blur is a so okay. Now let's see what happens when we do it with this one. So, what do you think will happen when you convolve with uh, such a kernel? Yeah. Yeah, it's basically the same image. That is that is the indicator function. You'll see when uh, when Alex is teaching sampling. So he v sampling is basically convolution with the indicator function, and this is a this is a two D indicator function which basically takes the input and gives itself. So uh, when you do it on a continuous signal, you get uh, the sampling. So this gives the same. Right? Yeah, this gives the same image. So yeah, so the code we wrote wasn't really optimal because it doesn't uh, account for padding carefully and uh, it's very slow because we have four loops inside it goes to every pixel in the in the input and then it goes to uh, every pixel in the kernel rather how you can implement it is uh, is you can uh, you can represent this kernel as a chronicle product basically you have like a block matrix uh, of uh, of the of kernel uh, padded everywhere in in it's like a, uh, should have had an image for it but yeah, so when you have this chronicle, pro I'll probably add it when I'm uh, when I'm uploading it. So uh, so when when you have such a chronicle pro chronicle matrix, it's basically sparse. So sparse matrix versus uh, times uh, dense matrix is a uh, is a relatively uh, uh, it's a cheap it's not I I would it's a cheaper operation, but it's also highly parallelizable. So all these uh, all these uh, libraries like SciPy, NumPy, and uh, OpenCV they use a uh, they use such, uh, uh, su I mean, such implementations. Or another, another way which you can do it is uh, using the convolution theorem. So what what convolution theorem says is, uh, when you have a convolution operation, it's basically multiplication in the Fourier domain. So when you have two signals or two images, you just take a Fourier transform of uh, each of them, uh, basically Fourier transform of a kernel and Fourier transform of the image, and you basically multiply them in the Fourier domain. And, you, and then you do inverse Fourier transform, and then you get the convolved image. So uh, this is also used by SciPy, I think. So let's see uh, how to use such functions. So I'm using this signal.convolve2d, which is from SciPy. I imported it here from SciPy import signal. And now, uh, just a second. Yeah, so I'm taking a kernel of uh, all ones, five by five. It's basically the same operation. So, so just uh, showing showing that if if it has a larger support, it uh, it wasn't the image uh, even more because obviously uh, images uh, you lose all the local characteristics when you uh, increase the support. So, so let's uh, let's see how we can construct a Gaussian kernel. Like Alex was talking about it in the class today. Um, so. So I so I want to just uh, I, I want to show you how to construct a 2D Gaussian kernel, which is uh, so let's see how to do it in 1D first. Uh, so this lens space basically uh, create it's like uh, in MATLAB you have this set, uh, you have this notation of 10 is to something is to this uh, notation. What it does is be between minus 10 to 10 it evenly samples 30 points. Um, so you want to uh, uh, given these points, you want to calculate what the Gaussian function uh, value is at each of these points, and 
you're, you're basically normalizing them because you don't want to explore the values and you let's see how it so <clears throat> so since you're normalizing them you the values are no longer between minus 10 to 10 but still uh, so you get such a Gaussian shape and let's say if you want to construct a Gaussian isotropic kernel basically you can just uh, do an outer product between uh, these uh, both uh, these both uh, these both 1D kernels and so uh, so doing that uh, we get something like this so it's like it's Gaussian it's it's a Gaussian where you have most of the weight in the center and it slowly dampens over it um, so uh, if if you want to construct an anisotropic kernel basically uh, one uh, one way how to do it is uh, you just change the support on one axis and just uh, increase the support on another axis then basically you you get uh, uh, so here what i did is uh, initially i had uh, minus 0 0.1 times uh, uh, times uh, t square See, so uh, which is basically when you, when you, when you, if you remember the Gaussian uh, distribution, it's the sigma. Uh, when it's 0.1, uh, basically the sigma is small. So since the sigma is small, the dampening is slow. When you increase it to 0 0.7, the uh, it's more localized. So uh, the sigma is high. Uh, so, so the sigma is low since it's in the denominator. So you, it's more localized, and you have less, uh, you have fast dampening in that. So if you visualize it. You see that it's uh, it's hap the da dampening happens. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I think I miss uh, said something uh, here. So if you see, um, yeah. So it's uh, so when when uh, so. When the sigma is higher, you 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 get uh, longer. Uh, you you get uh, you get heavy weighted. Uh, dis you, you, it's heavy weighted like this. And when sigma is uh, when sigma is small, it's like this. So that's why when you increase it, uh, the the numerator to 0.7. Um, yeah. So that's why that's why point. Uh, yeah. This is by ten, and this is seven by ten by seven. So, um, yeah. So the sig so the sigma is uh, it's. So can you want to help me out? Uh, yeah, it's a variance. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, here I'm just uh, confused between the numerator and the denominator. Okay, okay. Anyway, so this is, so in when it's point one, uh, the uh, so basically the sigma is higher, so the variance is uh, again I misread it, but it's so it doesn't matter. So in in one the uh, yeah yeah so. So yeah, so it's so it's that that's when you get an isotropic kernels, and you can see that if you if you apply it on the image, uh, it, you you get you see that x's are x's are fine, but y's are more uh, smoother, and also you can notice that uh, these blacks, uh, the corners in the black, are because you have uh, the size of the convolution is uh, basically thirty by thirty, and you're losing thirty pixels here because of zero padding. So. Uh, so uh so no this is this is with isotropic so when you do ah uh, sorry you, when you compare these both pictures you see that uh in the second one uh the the uh, in the second one you see you see less distortion in the x axis and more in the y so and then you if you rotate it uh you get the opposite effect okay so so if you want to uh, if you want to sharpen an image, so basically you can do it with a uh, with a Laplacian filter, where you have uh, the cent the cent the center is uh, it's it's in the peak and you all the uh, and the borders are in uh, the negative, uh, so it's basically minus one. Uh, um, so it's uh, something like this. It so. 
it's this is at the center and this is this is uh, even below so if, if you want to uh, sharpen uh, an image basically this this detects edges and it it gives all the high high frequencies so once you get the high frequencies uh, you can just uh, you can just add them back to your original image and get 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 a sharper image out so if you can see that in this image the the details in the ed, in the edges are much sharper than the original one uh, which is wait, i'll show you here Uh, if you can, if if you probably if you zoom in, you can you can see that the hair and such uh, fine regions are much sharper in the in the image image above. Unfortunately, this is too too small to observe. I think. Um, so yeah. So previously, if you remember how we constructed this Gaussian kernel, what we did was we had two one D kernels and then we did an outer product. So this is not true for uh, any any type of blur. Uh, like it's let's say you have random blur, you can't really separate the uh, separate both the both the x x x uh, uh, blur in the x direction and y direction uh, uh, separately. So you, so rather you can you can have a better implementation. So uh, so basically this uh, you create a mesh grid of all the points which define the PSF or, or p points per function or the kernel. They both the same. Um, so and then uh, you uh, at every point you define uh, you define a different function. Here it's a Gaussian, that's why you define it like this. Let's say you have some other function which is parameterized in x and y, so you can also define it. Uh, let's say it's a, it's some random trajectory. So you can if you if you know uh, how uh, some guiding parameters for that, you can define uh, a blur kernel for that for such a trajectory. Uh, you will see more. Uh, uh, you'll see this kind of stuff in your first homework, so uh, this is kind of important for it. So if you have, uh, if you uh, if you want to create a, if you want to create arbitrary kernel, so you can just create a mesh grid, and you can see uh, how the trajectory or uh, how the uh, how the uh, how, how the movement of the. I won't go too much into it, but yeah. So it's you can use mesh grid uh, to define what uh, value each pix each uh, each blur each each point at the in the blur kernel carries. So, so yeah. So uh, you can you can create a mesh grid, and you can uh, mesh grid is a, a NumPy function. It's also in MATLAB. So uh, yeah, and you define at every point what. Uh, uh, what uh, uh, how how the x and y affects uh, that particular uh, in this case if it since it's a Gaussian kernel so you saw the uh, x and y is affect the Gaussian kernel in this way for a given uh, sigma and the uh, and the mean okay uh, so so just uh, and uh, and if you if you if you want if your kernel size is hundred and the sigma is ten. So you see that uh, you get uh, you get a Gaussian kernel. So yeah, yeah, exactly. So and you give x and y and what kind of uh, what kind of properties that this follow, and you can you can just get you can just create a PSF. <coughs> so. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, this uh, this convolution is really is really important operation. Uh, so here, you, here we saw that uh, convolutions were fixed, and there, I mean, you saw some uh, image processing operations like uh, uh, blurring. Uh, you didn't see we didn't see deep blurring, but we saw blurring and sharpening the image, and you can also detect edges and all this stuff. Uh, but uh, the the key point is this co this convolutions when uh, uh, recently when they are learned, so they. Uh, like in convolutional neural networks, when you uh, when you do uh, several of them one after the other, and you minimize some loss. So when you learn this convolution, they seem to be really effective and detect uh, high-level features, uh, low-level features, everything uh, just by learning. So it's a uh, it's 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 a fundamental operation in image processing, and yeah, that's it.